Call the meeting to order. <clears throat> First action item is approval of the May 30th minutes. So I have motion. Okay. okay, second. All those in favor? Yeah. All right. That was interesting. Okay. Apparently, you can vote on that anyway. Really? Ethically, I did watch it on weird. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ethically, it's weird, but you, you're in, by agree. law entitled to yeah. vote. Well, on. I, I'll do the good, the proper thing and abstain. I'm proud of you. Right. Thanks. Okay. Public comments was the next item here. Public. Dan, anybody have comments? Uh, a little early. early. Let's, Let's get ahead of the game, Dan. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, it has to do with uh, your comments of putting the uh, car in front of the horse. Uh, last budget season, there was a tremendous discussion of uh, getting our capital planning committee more involved with the town, some long-range planning. I think Fred wanted to get some uh, building maintenance involved. Uh, and I was just wondering if the select boards had any chance to, to review that. And maybe I know our planning. Capital planning only meets currently once a year, which I personally think is shameful. Uh, I know our most other towns are on a very regular basis. Capital planning is meeting with the, either the select board or finance committee. Uh, no, we, we haven't uh, discussed it as a board. The only discussion was with finance, and then Brian and I had some discussions on it. And. I guess right now it's not our highest priority. And we're waiting uh, kind of for Brian was doing some research on it, see what other towns are doing, and we're gonna schedule something in the next month or two, I guess. I know Brian really is hired yeah. Joel Ketchum and Ricardo. Mercarian. Mercarian, thank you. Yeah. Uh, from the FERCOG to set up their help them with their long range planning. Yeah. It's better. No, we haven't forgotten, or at least I haven't forgotten about it. Yeah, I don't think Brian has. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I mean, and anything anything that, in, in my mind, the conversations revolved around any department or any entity within the town that had a pretty big impact on the budget. It's why we want to start the discussions with the schools on, on their budget much earlier than, you know, January, right. in the middle of the fiscal year. And I think capital planning would be in that same vein because it can be pretty, pretty good ticket items. Okay. Um, and, and, and just so that we can really have a, a stronger foothold on, on the priorities of the town. I, I, I think it's necessary, but we haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Public comments? Keith, do you have anything? Okay. Okay, okay moving on to scheduled appointments. At uh, 6 o'clock, we had Wayne Sibley was going to talk on public records, guideline adoption, and vote to adopt Mass General Law. Chapter 32B, section 21 to 23. Um, well, let's do the easier one first. Part of the new public records law is that each town has to uh, establish guidelines for their public records requests and post them on their website. So I have um, actually the draft I think you all have is um, was presented by Copeland and Page. So, or KNP law, things they change. Um, and I revised just a few small things to accommodate wait lease unique situations like uh, the county records and the regional school district and things like that. So I'm just looking for an approval from you folks so that I can, it's on the website because it was required to be put in place by July 1st, but I didn't get the opportunity to get it to you folks in time to get it approved. So it's on the website in a draft form. And um, once, and if you folks approve it, then I will make that a, change it to a non-draft form. So my only question is, I, I see, you know, the different designees for assessors and yeah. police, et cetera. But the two that stick out that aren't there, from from my opinion, and maybe I'm just clueless they come in terms to of who asked for information. Anything that's not listed here. So fire comes would go to you, and highway would go to you. At this point, 
wouldn't it be easier for you if fire went to John and highway went to Keith? If there's timing constraints, I mean, I, I, maybe highway to Keith would, would be okay, but um, with John, sometimes the timing constraints are, are difficult to meet. So if they come to me, I can make sure and that things get done. That's, I, actually, there aren't an awful lot of requests on the fire department side of things. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, I can see Jonathan's going to make all sorts of public <laughs> requests. <laughs> what about the water department? That was every year um, the they're under me too at this point. Okay. Yeah. Anybody, because I'm the principal records access officer, anything that's not on here comes to me. I think a lot of it is it gives when the ability to just supervise the picture yeah. of the time. The response. Yeah. Picture of the picture. Yeah. 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 I had two questions to ask. Um, one was, I'm looking down there, was in, the, in the weeds down there, mm -hmm. number 26, um, about, uh, you know, since we're a small town, we can charge a fee for your time, essentially, right? We can. And um, uh, that we can't, we can, like, most towns have to give them the first two hours for free and then right. charge after that, but since we're a small town, we can charge for the whole time. Right. So, we can, right? We can. How are we deciding on whether to charge people for those first two hours or not? My, my little note, honestly, I'll read right from it. I suspect we're using common sense, but I just wondered what the default has been in the past. Um, generally, if, I mean, I'm pretty much going by the two hour guideline, even though I can charge for less, mm -hmm. less time. But a lot of the requests are, a lot of the requests are simple email it. You know, you don't really um, even have to. I haven't run into a situation, either it's more than two hours or it's five to 10 minutes. Okay. And I'm not gonna charge for five to 10 minutes worth of time. Okay. So. Um, all right, so common sense prevails. Common sense prevails. Can I follow up on that for a question? Sure. The other thing that struck me, the five cents a page, and I get this law was passed largely to, to, to assent to the demands of the Boston Globe and, and other large organizations looking for information. But that means that freedom of information is only accessible to people with the ability to pay. So would the town ever waive that the law, fee? The law uh, allows for exemptions if it's in the public good? Common sense public good, to use Joyce's, Joyce's term. Well, there's a hardship process, too. For, there is a hardship process. Is there a hardship process? process. process. Yeah. You know, if it's going to be $100 okay. or something, they can afford it. Good, because, I mean, freedom of information shouldn't just be for those who right. would be ability to yeah. pay. Yeah. To and tell you like the truth, I don't, I, in the last, I've only charged one person fees in the last, since this went into effect. Okay. in January so and that was just because it was copying a lot of stuff it took me a, it took me about 20 minutes worth of time and I charged her for the copying fees so, okay. so the, the street listing or the uh, voter registrations is that something that has been made available in the past and paid for by people or? street list is a different falls under it's a public record, but there's additional requirements on street lists. Technically, if it's going within the town, you know, to a department or something like that, there is no charge. And but if it's going outside, people actually have to sign a log that they're paying for a street list. And I've been charging seven dollars for a street list because that's pretty much how much it costs me to produce a, a street list. So a political campaign that wanted a street list would be charged $7 Seven. for access to that street list. Again, there's a separate yeah. law that <laughs> allows for a candidate to have a candidate's list free of charge. That would just voter, that would just register voters. That would not right. be a street list. Right. Yeah. 
So you have to figure out all the other laws that pertain, pertain to these laws. <coughs> okay. Well, um, and the one last question. Um, that on your appeals, they talk about if the requester is dissatisfied and so on. <coughs> what kind of situation would we not allow people access to records like legally? Well, sometimes people will request a record and feel that it's public record, but there may be an exemption that applies for that record. And you either redact those things out of a record and they may feel that no. we've redacted something we shouldn't or we're not providing something that we should, so they can appeal to go through the okay. appeal process. So they dealt with, there's a couple of different options for appeal there. Yeah. Okay. That, has that ever come up in your time as counselor? Um, not here, but I have heard of it in other towns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that was more, mostly out of curiosity. Yeah. Most of the time, uh, people are, uh, you know, if, if for some reason I find that I'm having a difficult time getting a rec getting everything that they ask for within the 10 days, if you talk to them and they say, oh, that's okay, and give you an extension, you're still within compliance because you've, you've met your response time of 10 days. And you don't have to supply the records within 10 days. You have to supply a response. So you could just say um, there is 100 pages or 1,000 pages of, of responsive records. It's going to take me this amount of time. And the new law allows for 30, up to 30 days um, to, to get that information to them. If you go beyond the 30 days, then they can go to the appeal process and say they haven't been compliant and Oh. All, right. All right, so I would make a motion to accept this. Second that. Okay, all those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay, passed. Uh, next appointment? Uh, well, we have the other, there, there one other topic here. The, uh, the one related to the Hampshire the <coughs> insurance. The, the chapter 32B. Oh, okay. 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 Did you want to start with that? <coughs> Sure, I'll start with it. Um, Lynn and I talked with town council this afternoon about this, uh, about this section of the law. And actually, Joyce may be a little refreshing because she wasn't here when. I, I, I saw your presentation on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm caught up to date as okay. of that. Okay. Yeah. Feel free to ask questions then. Um, we talked to town council this afternoon about, about this law. and. The advice we got was, was a bit different um, procedurally from town council than what we got from the um, Hampshire County Insurance Trust. What town council <coughs> recommended, it's, what he strongly recommends is that the first vote that the select board would take would just be to accept uh, the provisions of 32B sections 21 through 23. It's a local opt-in statute, so the board needs to accept the statute first, and then there would be a a second vote that the board would take to actually commence the process of changing health insurance. What he recommends is that uh, the board vote to just accept the provisions of General Law Chapter 32B, let Hampshire County Insurance Trust vote to make their plan design changes, and then the board would then make its second acceptance to engage in the process of changing our health insurance plan. Oh. Um, we asked him the question of, well, what happens if we don't do it? Don't do the second part. If we don't do this at all. Oh, if, we don't, if we don't think, uh, <clears throat> take part in this process. And I think his point was a good one. It was, the town's in a position where we, where we don't dictate, we don't get to decide what our health insurance plans are. We, we take what Hampshire County Insurance Trust offers or if we went with Maya. Those are the people who design the plans. So really, with the old plans going away, regardless of hypothetically who we went with, we can't we can't offer the same <coughs> that we're offering this year. So really, regardless, we are going to be offering a changed plan because it doesn't exist. Because it doesn't exist well, anymore. Well, oh, here's um, the question. My thought, what I thought I, I heard from Lewis' presentation was that they could offer the same plan, we just have to pay more for it. And that would mean, you know, with the current agreement, then 
But if they're not, you're saying they're not going to offer it. I'm they saying won't they have to vote. They won't be offering the same plan at the same prices. Yeah. So. But they may offer the same plan at higher price. We just don't know. Right. If everybody, I mean, you, that is not what we're hoping for. I mean, yeah. because it would, it would, it would be disastrous for the town as well as the employee be because the premiums would, would be skyrocketing. It should be on paper for everyone to see, though. Right. How and much that, higher things would be if you do nothing. Right. Yeah. But I think the, the big thing here is it's not, we aren't going to be able to negotiate plan changes. I, I, we do have some input into the Hampshire Insurance Trust. I'm the representative for the town of Whateley, and we kind of decide and give direction as to how we want them to make changes. Like none of the people that attended the meeting were high on deductibles, you know, because they talked about doing deductibles. We, most of the people there felt it was better to do s smaller, I mean, increase the co-pays a little bit or make a co-pay on something that doesn't have a co-pay now. And that that would spread out the cost throughout the year, whereas if you're doing a deductible, it hits people yeah. all in the beginning of the year. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we do have a little bit of input in how they go about doing those design changes. And we can also be and put input into how drastic those design changes can be. So, um, but then they will present a unified plan that all parts of the trust have to agree to. But then to continue on, I'll let Brian continue on with the rest of our conversation about if we don't oh. do it. <laughs> I mean, well, essentially what happens if, if we don't vote to follow this process, and we can't find the exact same plan from somebody else, uh, it, it's possible that that uh, any of the bargaining units would have a, yeah. the right to file a claim with the Department of Labor Relations that, You'd be a breach of contract that, that, that we didn't negotiate provisions of the, you know, we didn't negotiate these provisions of the contract, even though, and this was a question, this is one of the original questions that Linda and I had was, even though it's not specifically stated in the union contract, but it is laid out chapter 32B specifically that these things. <clears throat> the prior decision of, of the Department of Labor Relations. My only concern with taking it up at this meeting is <clears throat> that at our last meeting, at our last two meetings, or the last two of the last three, we expressly told um, elementary school teachers who are here representing their colleagues that we wouldn't move on this without them being present. And so I worry that we're going back on our word if we move on this without them being present, because we told them that we would make them aware that it was going to be discussed and that they could be here. So, because so, they're obviously very nervous about this. Right. So, so two things on that. Well, one was I I did um, email um, Susan Siegel, the union representative, and gave her notice of this meeting. When? Um, what it was forty-eight hours required her notice okay. like forty-eight hours. <clears throat> Um, and the way that it was explained to um, by the by town council today was the the notification that we need to provide to the unions is for that second acceptance. Um, Hampshire County Insurance Trust, as designers to they related, they said that they needed to be notified of even of the town's acceptance of the statute. Um, and that's not what he was saying. He was saying. When, when the select board takes that second vote to actually begin the process of changing health or exploring changes to the health insurance, that's when they need to be notified. This is, the first vote is simply, is simply an acceptance by the town of a local opt-in statute. Did so, you say, I'm still, little, sure. I'm still a little, I, I think I understand what the first <coughs> vote would be should we choose to take it. Can you understand what the second vote is actually doing? Yeah. That that you're, that our our town council who's got our best interest in mind. Yep. Is right. <coughs> so. So that is that's that's. Um, so we send out notice of the board's intent to vote 
I want them to engage in the process to make plan design changes. So this first goal so my is intention to engage in a uh, health plan changes. <coughs> so right now, by accepting the statute, we're not <coughs> uh, committing ourselves one way or the other to make or engage in any kind of change <coughs> to our health Correct. plan. Uh, and the second vote would be the one where we say, yeah, we're going we're to do that. Right. Um, why should the first vote be taken tonight? Uh, well, the first vote needs to be taken in front of, you know, prior to. Prior to the second um, vote. Yep, prior but to the first vote. Um, it, needs, it needs to be taken for us. It's a precursor to engaging in the second vote. Right. Um, like, for example, does this help the, the, the Hampshire Insurance Trust needs the commitment of the towns right. that they're entering into this uh, pro procedural uh, system that they, right. they've approved the adoption of following this particular procedure through. Right. So, um, even if we haven't committed to even change our plan, right. they need that first one more than they need the second one to get started on their Right. Business figuring out what they can offer. Right. And this is this is from this is from town council. You yeah. Said, um, based on a it didn't cite the ruling, but based on a recent ruling from the state departments, the waiver requiring that member units of a joint purchasing group, so or member unit, or member of the of the Hampshire County Insurance Trust, um, such as the HCNT, must accept the statute prior to the joint purchasing group to vote to make plan design changes. So we have to vote to it. So we should, under this ruling, the town should vote to accept, just accept the statute, the local opt-in statute, prior to Hampshire County Insurance Trust vote to make plan design changes. I get all this, but again, my, my concern is not, and, and this shouldn't be taken the wrong way, that that I'm not concerned about our, our bargaining agreement with, with with the union, but I, I'm more concerned, just my, my word, that I told them we would not act on this until they were here. Now, 48, I, I, I get it, I, I do get it. They chose not to be here. Are, are you sure that they received, I mean, no, I, I just think 48 hours, it's, 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 a, it's a holiday weekend, it's, you know, emails get missed over a holiday week. What's that? Technically, they didn't even have to be notified to follow this. I, I get that. I'm not saying the technical. I'm not saying the letter of law. I'm saying just ethically, we we promised. Them. At least I did. And I, and I and I'm all for this. I think we should vote for it. <clears throat> but if if I've got nothing else, I've got ethics. And we told them we would not act. On until they were until they were here and again if it was the middle of September and we all know that emails are being checked on a five minute incremental basis yeah and they choose not to show up but it's a holiday weekend can, can we act on it subject to Brian discussing it with them within the next <coughs> several days what's the downside of not acting on it until our June whatever or July whatever meeting. Don't you need to know by what the next? Trust? I need to trust know trust before the IAC's next meeting. And when is that? The beginning of July. I'm mean, July 20 something. So, right around the time of our next meeting, which I believe is the last week in July. Yeah. Right. And we're not meeting on the 12th. We're meeting the 26th. I think the trust is meeting on the. <coughs> I think I have it here. I want to say they're meeting the day after, but don't quote me on that. Yeah. 
schools meeting on Wednesday, not on Monday? Right. I'll come again? You're meeting on the 26th. I'll come again? 26th. Why not the 24th? I have the email through it. Because we're moved it to Wednesday, and that's the day all three of you can take it. Okay. I mean, I, I could go check so if, if we didn't that much. Because at our meetings, I assume there's just during the day. Well, what are they you actually doing? wanted a decision by July 1st. Yeah. Um, what is your handwritten comment as something on July 27th? Is that the day you're looking for? That's, that was. Did they change the uh, second stage oh, here after it is July 27th? 27th? It is well, that, that's from town council. Oh. Is that the schedule he gave? Usually they meet on Wednesdays, yeah. so I think it's the 26th. Well, is there? I mean, I mean, anyway, to accept this and with the make it very, very clear to our audience that we are not intending to engage in health plan change process <coughs> at this point without further consultation from the teachers. Just, we, we can make that very clear orally. We can send them an email. We can do any number of things. Um, but one, I mean, one of the things, the reasons that I think we should accept this statute is because I think the Hampshire COG is, they're being very proactive about this. And they're giving us enough time, you know, to get, you know, so I mean, there'll be lots of negotiation, but sooner or later we get to have a town meeting vote on the budget, which is going to include all the teacher salaries and benefits, and that's going to be in April. Um, and I don't see any sense to dragging our feet on this. We get ourselves in a better position, I think, if we accept the statute, um, but do not express an intention to engage in the health plan change process at this time and to pursue that at another time and maybe specifically invite uh, Jen Kellogg or anyone else associated with the teachers union who would like to come and, and talk about it. I mean, that's, I, I think that's with the spirit of what you promised. And Are you making that in motion? Uh, sure. Make that a motion that we accept, uh, vote to adopt MGL Chapter 32B, Section 21 through 23, and explicitly state that at this time we do not express an intention to engage in the health plan change process uh, without further consultation from the union, and we will invite them to our next meeting. Would that be? I mean, it could be I union think or non-union members. Know. I don't care no, whether they're union members or not. It would not. be two meetings because two meetings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For county trust trust. Well, it'd be fine to hear from them before having to make the second decision. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I would not. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't <clears throat> mind which meeting looks more convenient for them. <coughs> but you're right. This you're right. This is this is simply the, the acceptance of a statute. Um, for now and into the future, for, yeah. for uh, until the, the sessions. Yeah. Okay, I'll second. I'll second that motion because I agree with what you're proposing. It's not ideal, but it, I mean, I don't see an option. But mm -hmm. I, I really, and again, I would welcome the conversation. I don't care whether you're a member of a union or not. You, you're an employee that's impacted by this dramatically, potentially, and, and we should have maximum conversations about this and that's what sort of the, the, the gist of what we had discussed. There will be right. many opportunities for further kind of Okay. Yeah, the process that's, that's set up has three different committees composed of union representatives, employee representatives. Yeah. It's really lays out the, the process of how. Okay. 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 okay, all in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Second, earliest that second vote would be would be in August. It sounds like likely. Town council recommended that we see the Hampshire County Insurance Trust 
comes up with plan changes. Yeah. Okay. And at that point, the board will make its oh, okay. And then decision may or may not at that point. Uh, by uh, any arbitrary August deadline, but you're saying the earliest it would be is August. Okay. Right, because it's, right. We, we need the Hampshire County Insurance Trust meeting first, and then. And they may not just do it this way. Yeah. Okay. And again, it doesn't obligate us to go with Hampshire County Insurance Trust. The, sure. the concern is, is that the plans in their current form won't exist. Yeah. Whether okay. we'll Hampshire County Insurance Trust or something. <coughs> so it's kind of de facto change. Okay. 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 Moving on to the next uh, item, scheduled appointment. Uh, Chief uh, James Savine is going to talk about policy strategies, uh, policing, I guess you know say, policing strategies. Yes, this is the, I guess the first stage. Um, Mark came up with this, the strategies to meet the performance goals. We talked about a strategic plan and some of the goals we wanted to put in place <clears throat> and i think he's got it outlined here i don't know if you guys had a, a chance to read it or not but he's got three three different goals um, set up on there i think it's in the spirit of what we discussed during um, contract meetings i don't know if you want to go through them take a look at them discuss them more in depth Sorry. I took a look at uh, <coughs> strategy number, under goal number one, strategy number two. That hasn't happened yet, I assume. This. Correct. And then most of these will not have happened yet. But number one, I actually reminded myself that I did like the way the police department Facebook page long ago, and I hadn't checked it. And, uh, and it, you know, you, you seemed to, like in the last of June, and we were pretty active about putting up. Just, yeah, that was um, that was discussed, so we're going to try to do that more, more frequently. Yeah, you've got one more day to make sure that you've done it within a week. So the last update was last Thursday. So I'm just, just saying. <coughs> and it, so, so my, I guess my, my main question was, these are sort of suggestions of the first thing, and you want to... Right. Ideas of what... First step is establishing kind of the plan. Okay. As, like the strategy number two be able to post a police blotter we we've, we've discussed it uh, before but the software in our record management system uh, they're in the process of updating that through our dispatch center so once that's updated <clears throat> and once we have access to that uh, we'll literally be able to just print out i can put in a pdf post it right to the right to our department's website just a blotter of you know date time what the activity was. Um, as the way it stands right now, we do um, a daily log, which is more detailed uh, because we don't have police officers, we don't have roll calls and certain things that pass down information. So we put all that information into our, our daily log. So a blotter would have just more basic information, but our log, the way it stands right now, I'm not comfortable posting that. If somebody wants to come in and look at it, that's fine. But as far as posting that information, I'd have to redact so much stuff out of it in order to be able to post it. It would just be way too time consuming. So um, that police blotter being part of our software, that'll be much easier. It'll literally take me less than a minute to do it. Um, Is that log provided to Brian or anybody else here? Uh, it's not provided to anybody, the daily log. Yes, it's it's log. kept at the station, but we don't provide it to anybody. Because if I did provide it to somebody, I'd have to redact. Like I said, I'd have to redact a lot of information. Right. Mm -hmm. But whether I post it publicly or whether I disseminate to, disseminate it to somebody, <coughs> I'd still have to redact it. Right, I to see it. Every... Be, anybody can come see it, yeah. but if I provide it to them. What's the difference between providing and community seeing Give, giving you a copy of it that you can take out into the public. And <clears throat> right, but I guess my point is, is that if, if, let's use Brian. Let's use mm -hmm. <laughs> if <laughs> if, 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 if you were to walk it over and show it to him, that redaction still is necessary regardless of whether you walk over here or he walks over to, to your office. How is that different? It, it's more, disseminating is different than but just coming the, in and viewing. But the, the public information is still out. He still sees the details that you may not want him to see 
That's what I don't public, get. Public. I don't yeah, get where, where that information viewed. isn't put in there. So where it's viewed shouldn't matter whether information is redacted or not. Why? Because it's it's a matter of disseminating that, giving that to somebody versus just looking at it. Anybody can come in and look at it, but if you wanted to take a picture of it, if you want a copy of it, if you want a hard copy of it, there's there's things that are in in that daily log. Like the daily the blotter that we're discussing as part of as part of the software redacts all that information and just gives you the date time of the call. But for our purposes, we we don't include people's Corey information, criminal offender information. We don't include any of that in there. We don't put victims' they names and things like that. Or reinstation. Correct. And you go leave there and just run off his mouth. You could. Want. You could. I mean, people could do that. So I guess I don't understand victims, but okay. But what, yeah, saying something versus taking something, I don't know what they're going to do with it. I don't know what they're going to, where they're going to post that, if they're going to give that information to somebody, <coughs> utilize that information for some other, some other purpose. So we'd have to. If it's disseminated, then it has to be a different, uh, different format than, than what it's in now. So, okay. My only my only comment on this is fine, but on goal two strategy numbers one and two, I'm more concerned with one than two. We had discussed four, but we had discussed four new outreach, but not four because that can just be the same activities as before. We want new so that people see an uptick in, act, in activity, in, in visibility, as opposed to just putting it on paper that we're going to do what we have always done. I think that's where the approval of the advanced approval. But, so but it's something it's that still you can say, we don't, we don't like this program, we want something new. Yeah. Put that I program. still want to put new in there. I, I, what was the yeah. contract language say new? It doesn't say new, and it doesn't say no. subject to approval. From what I can see, under goal number two. Right, because we took out some of that because mm -hmm. Jim didn't want it in the contract, but we agreed to it verbally. Mm -hmm. that, and, and so I just want you in there. So that everyone can understand that this is, we're, we're working to maximize the visibility of the department, not working to make sure that the visibility of the, of the department is simply in black and white written down on a piece of paper. Well, goal, yeah, goal two and even goal three, he has to come back to us with, with more detail. Right, for our approval in advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, where is the approval in advance part though? That, that I didn't even see. It's in the, I'm oh, not sure what you got, but yeah, strategy, what you know about for this performance yeah. and goal strategies. Mm -hmm. It's the uh, performance goals and strategies. Second to last sentence. Are you looking at the contract? Or? No, I'm looking okay. at the, what we got in the. Uh, what well, it says approval in advance by where they select boards. Strategy one. Uh, goal, two, goal two, strategy one. Over to the select board. You're approved by the select board. Okay. Presented to the select board. Okay, what is it? Okay, I just went over okay. them. Yeah. I remember that as a first step, but I think that's good. So do you want to add them? Okay. Plan and attend, out. this is goal two, strategy one. Plan and attend, always four. New community outreach events. Yeah. And yes. then for strategy two, <coughs> coordinate plan to present at least four new training classes or workshops for us. Yeah. Is that okay with you, John? Yeah. Can, can you give me an example of an outreach event that we already do and one that might be an idea for a new one? Or are you not there yet? Uh, that's what I'd like to discuss. At, oh, at some okay. Point to see what I mean, I, I well, have. What do we have now? Well, as far as community outreach programs, I mean, it's it's not we don't have a, an official um, outreach program, so to speak. Or um, we do more we do more training, um, attending events, attending a Grange meeting, or going to triad meetings, or you know, the triad spaghetti supper, or things like that. That those are community events that uh, that we would do. I mean, trainings we do. Um, Okay, courses, just, safety yeah, courses yeah, for women and children. We do firearm safety courses, CPR classes. Okay. And those are some of the things. But those we'd have to do something new. So something new might be just meeting with the with the Grange and talking to them about identity theft, doing a, a training session on identity theft or something like that. I've never heard about any of those. And I know one way that you could get that information out to the community, and like everybody would get it in their mailbox. Mm -hmm. 
And um, that's the, that's <laughs> the next, what it is. That's the next I, step. So, can, I mean, I don't know if that can be added in here, but um, it's really important to get the word out about mm -hmm. the bubbles and the candidate. Yeah, that's that's got, part of the strategic plan. You know, everybody can get a phone call, so. everybody can get it on a quarterly basis in their mountain mm -hmm. mugs. Um, and I don't think you should just do one and not the other because you hit different people. Yeah. Scoops only every three months if something comes up on shorter notice, then, then um, I don't think it's a bad use of the, uh, of the telephone tree. What's the, I can't remember the official word for that. C Connect CTY? Yeah, it's not a bad use of that to let people mm -hmm. know about those things. Right. So, so I don't know if we can put something in here regarding yeah, ways to get the word out. Just multiple means of communication. By <clears throat> um, and I want to make sure that they're that's that. Well, I mean, this goes to the approval process, but triad's great. Don't get me wrong, but the spaghetti supper's in South Deerfield. Mm -hmm. It's not in Wayne. So you know, it, it, and, yeah, and there are no numbers that yeah. right. No, I get it. I get it. And there are no numbers that indicate how many. Or how few, and I have no idea how you know Waitley, typically seniors are going to go to the Triad Spaghetti Supper. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know I, I want it to be Waitley focused, and you know I just you know you get more you get why I, you know. Yeah, I agree. I wonder if increased radar stops could be community engagement. Uh, if you stop enough people, it's <laughs> we want positive interactions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could give us scratch tickets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, anyway, on that note, Northampton did that, or somebody did that. Recently. Okay, so this yeah, is we do have something just just as a point of interest. Um, I've gone around to local establishments and working right now. It's, I didn't come to the board. It's something I had already been working on. Um, it's uh, I haven't even come up with a name as far as a program, but I'm getting uh, like coupons for ice cream cones from BC. You know, a kid wearing a bicycle helmet or something, we can give them a coupon for a free ice cream cone. So I'm working with our local establishments to get, get some of those coupons uh, to be able to encourage positive behavior from kids, whether it's the bicycle helmet or whether it's helping around the yard. You know, things that we see, not not parents calling us up saying, hey, little Johnny did his chores. You know, something to get the officers out there, get you know, get people out there looking around, seeing a, a kid and engaging with them. So that's something that's already in the works, but I don't I don't know where that would fall. Would that follow as a community outreach program? Would that? I don't think it would. So that's that's kind of it was an idea because I'm trying to look at look from the select board as far as guidance. Is, do you want it in writing as to what the plan for this quarter is? I, here's I here's my right plan. Cool because then we can publicize it. Then it's yeah. not going in one year and not another year based upon how busy we are at any given moment in time. Mm -hmm. Because that's gonna. Mm -hmm. When you tell me something, if I'm swamped, mm. I'm going to say, Jim, that's great. And then I'm going to forget what you said five minutes later. And I'll just, you know, I'll fall on my sword and admit that. Yeah. Um, but I think mean, that idea is a very cool idea. If you can get my kids to do something, to, you know, do, do yard work, and if you can get them to do it without the incentive, that would be even better. But, yeah, you know. I hear you. Sometimes it takes a little nudging, you know. Okay, so do we need to take any action on this? or? Yeah, just those edits, and then it would be a good. It, it would be a good if we could come to an agreement, um, because that's what we talked about. That, that was linked to the contract that we would come to an agreement on the strategies to implement. When do we want to implement the specific strategies, by? Well, this this specifically is for the fiscal year. No, I understand that, but 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 we're also talking about the way the police will coordinate, plan, and attend at least four community outreach events for residents. Da, 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 da. Once a quarter. Once a quarter. Starting a good time to start July Q1, 5th, which right? is July 1st. I think well, I remember the contract says within nine, within 30 days. We would agree. We would, we would agree. Right. This one is 30 days. Cool. 30 cool. days of July 1. I guess. But the implementation. I mean, I don't expect Jim to to think. All right, in Q3, I'm going to do this. I mean, we don't know if the phone was loud or not. But right, right, right. So I, I just think that that we're behind the game now just because of the calendar but going forward it would be great to see what the Q2 community outreach event will be prior to the start of Q2 yeah. 
the, well, yeah, yeah. The, right. And but now we have to do Q one because then we're in we started Q one. I mean that's just the calendar. Mm -hmm. But I, I just wonder whether we need to codify to use a really bad word for this the the, the schedule <clears throat> going forward so that by you know ten within ten days of the beginning of the next quarter we see what those ac events activities are going to be for that quarter. Again, because if schedules keep us on, keep everyone on the same page, lack of a schedule leads it up, le le leads to nebulousness. This, 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 this. Well, it, what is written, it says approved in advance. So if we interpret in advance of the quarter, it starts. All right, but that could be. I would suggest for the next Quarter. That um, you know, like for things that are going to happen in the fall, if we could uh, know by August 23rd, maybe just a little blurb. It has two sentences by Jim Savini. Uh, 23rd is the deadline for the next scoop. Um, but it should be discussed here. At but, the but so so there there we go. If it gets discussed here in our um, earlier August meeting, then you're ready for publicity there, and then. Just so it's usually the last week of uh, of the month before it comes out. It comes out September, December, March, and then May is a little different because we want to get it out in time for Memorial Day. Um, so, so if we, could, it could, I mean, that would be one guideline that would help incorporate the means of publicity into. And you can talk about the old event. You can say, oh, this summer we ran around, we gave away 23 items, <coughs> something like that. So, so you're looking for something like that for, I'm sorry. That's good for telling the public what's going on, what he's doing. But I think it's, it's important to, for him to identify the four activities beginning of the year. Uh, to think about it now, you can change them during the year, but at least oh. we can see what's being Proposed for the for the four quarters. I guess I would hate to see every every quarter deciding. Well, does this make sense, or is this yeah. really doing anything? Because we didn't think the last one did, or if it isn't doing anything, well, what are you going to do in the third quarter? I think we're always going to every quarter be deciding on, on these activities. I think. But I think that was the whole. From, the, from what I got from it, to communicate the ongoing discussions right. as opposed to once a year and then make this happen. Meeting once a quarter. Discussing. I agree with that. I mean, meet, meet, meet regularly and, and, and we can talk about, because any program should have a recap on what worked and what didn't work. And you know, and, and if you come back and say, boy, that was a bust. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. You can learn from that. Or that was yeah. a home run, that's great. Yeah, but if the first time he comes, he comes with more than just one quarter's worth of stuff, that would be just all good. Ideas. I mean, yeah. what Fred was saying, if he, has and what I'm thinking of for the next quarter is this, even if it's not a fully formed idea, um, mm -hmm. and and so on. That's mm -hmm. not unreasonable. So that might be what to expect when you come see us. Is uh, is what activities for the next I don't know n quarters yeah. two subject, or three ahead. Subject to change. Subject to change. change right. As so many things are. Well, and, and this current quarter has to be determined pretty quickly. Otherwise, it's going to be. Old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is, I mean, this is why we've right. already started the, right. the extra phone thing and cut down two fire safety classes in the last month. But that's not something new. And this was kind of ongoing, already, already pre-planned. Right. And I, I mean, as you know, I'm less concerned about the, the training stuff as I am about just the visibility stuff. That, that's just me. I, I want to see visibility. I want people to know that there's a police department and I want people to understand why there's a police department. Why don't we say by the, our next meeting is the end of the month? Why don't we say mm -hmm. come back next meeting and tell us for this quarter what you're proposing to do? Okay. It's three weeks. Okay. Is that so the quarter that's so this now. first quarter at least in the okay. at least as a minimum for the first quarter. Okay. I like the ice cream. Okay. So so when you go. Oh yeah, exactly. Can we agree on, on this document because this document has significance in relation to the contract? Can you add that? in multiple means of I can. Um, With the schedule, yeah, additions. Add in the words new twice, and where do we want to put it? Well, going 
goal one, you've got the availability of information, police department operations, community events, workshops, on the town website, <coughs> social media. Yeah. And don't forget people events. check there that often to, for, for local events. Mm -hmm. So what you got? So should we add? But I would like you to apply to goals three, and two and three as well. Um, like what well, I mean, or maybe mostly applying to goals two and number and three is that uh, outreach events and training classes, workshops. Um, this will be a discuss yeah. putting it on the public access channel. Oh, right, what happens? I mean, it's just adding more, <coughs> putting in the school, doing a nice light bulb. I mean, those are well, that's, more things we can do. The school is the definition yeah. of outreach. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but does it have to be? Don't go to it, but they know do you have to happening. specifically put each each one in there? Or, I mean, is that? I think the, the gist of it was uh, yeah. all the avenues available. It, I think it's all I mean, including the scoop. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people in town that don't read the scoop. So yeah. And there are people in town that, that may not watch the cable access. Yeah. So you get it done as, as much so as possible. Get some other. Yeah. Way. So, but I think those should be certainly included. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say the next one and the town newsletter and any other yeah, any other means available. Multiple media. I want it in the scoop. <laughs> I, I don't want to get that. We, we can't say about one form of community. I know, I know. CNN, that, that Fox News, town, right? Town newsletter is I think sufficient, you know, if the things change and we have a different town newsletter, um, then the, you know, or if it ceases to exist, then it, that may be, it wouldn't be something you're held to. Um, but, okay. Uh, do, a, do a release in the recorder. They'll print it. Yeah. And the town website is, how is it going to be accessed? You have to go into the police department and then and look for I the think, blog, or is there a, there a the, tab somewhere, a folder? I think it has events that come up on the side. Is yeah. That, does that yeah. work for yeah. any new event, regardless well, of which news or whatever you call it? We don't, we don't have a ton of news yeah. no, or announcements right. at one time. So but that would be a good, good place to put it. It would be a very yeah. good place to put it on the whole page. And then so, what if and so people can plan ahead. So, so language on the lines of, that will be our test through multi multiple media channels, for example. So, EG Town Newsletter, Cable Access, Website, Newspaper, Social Media. I, I would even put in like the next CTY, the, the phone call that everybody in the town gets. Not that, everybody. If you have a private phone, it, you don't get yeah, it. Yeah, right. If you, if, well, if you don't sign up, you don't get it. But I think that I get so much positive feedback about that as a way of communicating what's going on. I know Lynn likes to have multiple things to tell people, though, so it would depend on what else is going on at that time. Mm -hmm. well, anyways, it's, it's, a, it's, it's something to consider because that's the, that's the way people find out. People don't necessarily go and check Facebook or check the website for things. Outreach doesn't mean people have to reach into you to get the information. Because you're trying to get it to people by, by the, the most effective way. And those are really the two most effective ways for people to find out stuff. So. Okay, so Brian, you're going to, you're changing which section here? Well, that was goal two. Just goal two. The I think that's there. the main two. one. That means that. <coughs> so advertising. So it's this community outreach events, training classes, and workshops for residents, students, or local businesses. That will be advertised through multiple media channels. Okay. E.g. time newsletter, cable access, website, newspaper. Those would show examples. Okay. That, that, that would be. And then the amendment with the word new after four, and the next one, new after four, the number four, and the next one. So if you're comfortable with that, if you're comfortable yeah. with making a motion to include that. All right. Second. Okay. Do need to bring in the sign? Yeah, I'm um, I will revise it and we can sign it. The next time? The yeah, next time. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's together if that's okay. Okay. All right, let's move the show around. Housing, old business. Uh, What's that? Move the show along. Housing trust, appointment of trustees. So, 
Yeah. Under the recently adopted Affordable Housing Trust Fund bylaw, the Select Board is tasked with appointing five trustees to the Affordable Housing Trust. Thanks, Jim. Just as a reminder, at least one of the trustees shall be a member of the Select Board. Talk amongst yourselves. And uh, another one of the trustees shall be a member of the CPC. And the board had previously asked the Housing Committee for recommendations as to uh, the other trustees. So in the, in the meeting packet, you have the three that were recommended by the um, Housing Committee. <coughs> one was Catherine Wolkowitz, and she's also a member of the, the CPC. She's also a member of the Housing Committee and the CPC, and the CPC recommended that she be appointed to the Housing Trust. Um, and the Housing Committee recommended uh, to the Select Board for Fred Barron and Richard Tilburg, both of the Housing Committee, to be um, appointed as trustees of the Housing Trust. That's those are three Select Board member positions. I don't feel like I have a lot of perhaps. other things that I'm committed to for the Select Board, so I'd be willing to do that unless someone wants to argue us any point. I mean, you, I, I don't know if, you, if you're interested. Uh, the reason that I did not, or they didn't appoint me, because we didn't know who our new select board member would be, so it didn't make sense yeah. to do it back then. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that affects this is these people, I think, would not only be the, the trustees of the housing trust, but also the housing committee. So we wouldn't have two separate committees. Uh -huh. So, I, so, so it sounds housing like housing trust maybe you know may not meet but once a year or whatever but the, mm -hmm. but the housing committee meets while they have monthly oh. meetings. Okay. So this is uh, this would not land you on the housing committee as well, is what you're saying? Well they're not sure. We're not the housing committee's not sure what's gonna happen with the committee. If everybody is a trustee, does that dissolve the the committee? No. Or is it all the same? I, I, I don't know. But they're, they're separate. They're separate. They're, Are they're they separate supposed boards? to be the same no. members? I didn't think so. Oh, they oh the same membership? I think, I, I don't see an issue with, with them having the same members, but they're two distinct. Which, but, but, but it's very difficult to have two entities. distinct boards if it's the same membership. I mean, all right. <laughs> that yeah, just I, doesn't I pass that. the smell test. All right. So you have to, have to post two meetings whenever you have a meeting. And, and <laughs> they're, going to, they're going to have to anyways if these three people are yeah. And does it, the other question I have, does the, does the trustees, well it says five members, there's only three or possibly four now. So we have. Does it have to have five before it can be official? No. Okay. I mean you can have a vacancy, you need just need to have a quorum to have, you need to have a quorum to operate. Okay. But if we have any other ideas of who can fill in that slot, that's great. We, we had advertisement up on the website for a while if people were interested in mm -hmm. becoming mm -hmm. a, a trustee of the House of Trust and we didn't receive any. So it really is okay to have the same membership on the trust and the, and the committee? Yeah. Wow. So. Okay. I nominate Joyce. Uh, okay. I would accept that unless Fred wants to arm wrestle any more. You're on, you're on the housing committee? Yes, I'm on a committee now, trustee. Oh, okay. Today, oh, well, I, I, I would defer to you if, if that if that would, I mean, I, I'd be less well informed. I assume that this got you on the housing committee as well. And it's probably not helping to have two select on the house. We can post for three meetings. <laughs> we can post for three meetings at once. So I would, I would defer to Fred and then I would take another opportunity when something comes up to, to do, uh, to do something. I don't have any particular expertise <coughs> in housing. I just, I live in one. And, Me too. And yeah, I, I, I'm I'm sure. I'm can I, I defer? Next year, they won't meet until after that anyway. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. 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 So what are we doing? Uh, defer to time. Defer. On all of these? Yeah. Okay. And he doesn't want to rest, arm wrestle right on camera. Yeah. Right? Oh, all right. Wait, we'll, we'll, all right. And then and just food for thought, three of these folks are two-year term, two of these people are one-year term. Okay. So how will? Flip a coin. However you feel. Flip a coin. And then once, just, just by way of information, once these are adopted, then the next step is for the, um, to execute the Declaration of Trust, execute, the town execute the Declaration of Trust and record it with the Registry of Deeds, and then 
housing trust would be off and running. Okay. With their pockets full of cash. Okay. Just, just kidding. Okay, moving on. East, East Whiteley School consider their request to waive the right of first refusal for a Frontier School Committee. That about sums it up. I I had a, a request from the from the Frontier School Committee passed through the superintendent. And they were wondering if the town <coughs> would preemptively waive its right of first refusal. Um, the school, I think, the theory is to make it more marketable. Do they have a suitor? Um, no, not that I know. I don't think they've gone out to bid yet, or or, or put together an RFP yet. That was um, that was a request that I received. If if the town doesn't waive it, in I mean, there's 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 a specific process in the deed that lays out what needs to happen. It's a typical right of first refusal process where they would have an offer and they would present it to the town, certified mail. You have 30 days, the town has 35 days, uh, 30 days to figure out what it wants to do with it, accept it or pass on it. And then if the town wants to exercise its option, it has 90 days to consummate the sale. Um, any, so if we did nothing, that's what the town would continue to have. But they were, they were, their request was if the town would preemptively waive the right of first refusal. The caveat here is that it's an interest in real property. So what the board would actually be agreeing to do is to put it on as, uh, the next town meeting warrant because it's actually a vote that needs to take place at town meeting. I don't know if you have any thoughts on. But this only applies to the one lot that the school is on, right? Correct. There's two lots. The town still owns lot. Right. <clears throat> one, I guess. This is lot two you're talking about. They own the lot with the field. No, they own the lot with the septic. Where's the septic? Yeah. Out in the middle of that field where right. it's got the thing right. raised. No. So, but how far out does the does the building go with the field? The Basically building goes the out halfway through. Halfway through. Halfway through. Basically, Basically, the infield belongs to the frontier. Yeah, the and then the outfield the belongs to the town. Center field and left field belongs Put me in coach. Yeah. And there's septic, that's where the septic tank is, right? Okay. But well, isn't there an easement on the town property? Well, there's an easement on both. Yeah. No, I understand. Well, the, yeah. the, so the school has, so there's cross easements. The school has an easement for the septic, which extends out to that lot. And the town has an easement to maintain the ball fields on that portion of so if they go to an RFP to sell it, the easement would go with the sale. Correct. Yeah. So whoever uh, were to buy it still has to let us have ball games there. Correct. And we have to And we have to let it have to let it. And what about parking? There's that little lot there I where think people normally park when they're I think playing ball there. I think the easement included parking. Yeah, but I mean, if people, if somebody, if if a suitor wanted to buy that and use the the infield for whatever, it, if that made it a more marketable property to, to not have to have softball and baseball practices being held there, let's make it a marketable property. To swap easements. Well, it comes fine. To I mean, but, but we, but but we it, need it, to be. Well, it comes to losing a resource. Yeah, yeah, it comes down to the rec, so, rec field. Do we want okay. to lose the rec field? Is it that important? I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, having not heard from used. the rec committee, I don't yeah. know how important that field is. It, it's to, used, but it's it's a it's a regionally used field. It's not a town exclusive field in terms of its usage. But that's so, true of most baseball so, fields. So in the potentially, area. this is affecting a lot of people, not just. <clears throat> This is a re it's, it's a community resource. It's a resource that's open to it, the town and to it is for for, to, for a couple months a year. Yeah. Now it, it it is it is possible that the school can be on its own parcel. There's enough land here to be on its own parcel, excluding the ball field and even excluding the septic. There's enough room on the town on the building site for even septic. So, to me, that may be the ideal sell whoever they're going to whatever their option is for the building, sell it with the parcel just for the building and you have, enough, like I say, enough room for septic. And the ball field is still the town property and the other lot there, they would add septic now, 
would be gone and that would be town owned property as well. And the easement would also include the park because we would need access to the park for, for ball field use. Well, well you could park along park. River Road if you wanted to. Uh, that could be a lot of, that yeah. could be a lot of cars. Yeah. I mean, that's, 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 and I don't want to get too far into the weeds yeah. on this, but it's potentially 18 families or more yeah. parking along River and Christian Lane. If I were a resident of River and Christian Lane, I'd say, no, use the parking lot. That's a lot of cars. But it's also potentially what that land could be used for, for the public good. If we ever decide, oh, we've got enough baseball fields, let's make this into a different kind of Field. Good. You know, so, so we kind of lose some. Op I like the idea of, of the kind of the way Fred expressed it. Let it just be the part that people would actually get to use that they would have to buy. If, you know, and, and I don't know what that means. Do we need to have the parcel rezoned or remeasured or, re or subdivided or anything like that? For so to do it residential. To if you were to put a business in, it would have to be rezoned. Yeah. Yeah. A special permit. Is it strictly residential? Yes. All yeah. That, yeah. And, and just to just to reiterate, I think I, I can't remember if I had the conversation with you or with somebody else. Uh, we already looked into trying out the Blue School as low income or elderly <coughs> housing. Right. That that's already been thoroughly investigated, and our is it the housing committee. Or the housing committee said you don't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole um, for reasons that people might have to go back to other sled board meetings but uh, it involves things that are buried underground and mold problems in the building and so much work would have to be done to it that it'd be uh, way too costly for uh, for a municipality with the, the not to pole. mention the lack of services anywhere near yeah, yeah. so uh, it just I just want to make sure that that's really that's really clear that anybody watching knows that that conversation has been had. Right for town purposes okay. for the housing. So, yes. so I would say give the right of first refusal for the footprint of the building and the parking, but we need and I don't care how you word it, but we need access. We need right of parking, and then we keep the fields. Yeah, keep the two fields. I mean, so essentially, you want to. Essentially, we would. The school's going to want to sell us the stupid field. That's the reality. I, I think the school would love to award it to anybody. I, I get that, but that's what um, they're going to want it. I mean, so we have our the easement. It's a perpetual easement for the to use of ball fields and parking the town has. That's, we're not being asked to give up that. Uh, but we, we can't do anything else with that other than ball fields if we don't know that. Correct. Right. Easement is for athletic fields. Well, for one parcel, the other. Egress and egress. For other parcel, it could be. You know. right. For the, right. So, I mean, it's something to think about. It's We can't do anything with this because it's right. uh, until we have talked about special town meeting and whether we want to put this on. But we need to start thinking about what's going to happen to that. I have, I have no problem with giving that. The, the giving up that right. As long as we have access to the to the to the asset, as Joseph puts it. Personally. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> we'll continue our discussion. Can we continue? Yeah. Okay. But it, it does take time meeting. But we'll do this then. So Okay, move on. Egypt Road, donation of easement rights to lay out Egypt Road alterations. So we're finally getting to the end of this process of straightening out Egypt Road. Um, I'll be started when you're on the board it's, before. It's, it's the same thing you talked about. It's the same about Egypt Road. Uh, but now the town, now the town finally acquired <coughs> the parcel. Okay. Um, Egypt Road is a county layout, so it requires um, give the county easement. to lay it out. So they need rights okay. to lay it out. So that's what the easement would provide. Mm -hmm. Again, it's town meeting vote because it's an interest of real property. So this will have to go on the next special town meeting warrant. Okay. I just wanted to give a heads up. Okay. Right. I assume there's no I objections to this. I don't have an objection. So, so Keith, nothing would be done until we get that easement, I guess, right? <coughs> uh, I would, I would agree with that. I hope not. When special town meeting? 
We don't have one yet. scheduled. Maybe like so sometime in August. Have it completed for this year, so. Probably sometime in August, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't think. I don't think. Why well, don't? What's What's the harm if we own it? What's the harm? Of, I don't know that there is. Yeah, I don't see what the uh, a harm in it. it, it we don't need to do this for to work. I, I think that's what this right. question was. That's what I'm asking. asking. I don't know the I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the legal answer to that. Um, I don't think there is, but we're just donating it to the we get to double check. For, right. For right. Right. Okay. But but is actual construction gonna be in the easement area? Or is that just all of it the, the short of yeah. okay, all of it in the easement area? I think for simplicity's sake, we're just giving an easement over that parcel, right? That tiny parcel that took place. They've already, they're already signed with everything. They've already signed with the plans. Okay. Right. Almost signed the plans. Okay. okay, moving on. Energy Committee recommendation on ECA Solar Host Customer Agreement and NEXAM Off Taker. We met, the Energy Committee met. Um, to discuss the host the host customer agreement and we agreed unanimously uh, to be a, ho a host of uh, for the ECA solar lot in Chicopee. Yeah, I believe we have ECA representatives here somewhere. I see a guy with a solar shirt. It's yeah. probably him. Yeah, so that's, that was the recommendation of the energy so. committee. I think the only thing the energy recommendation insisted on was that somewhere in the we have the um, the rates that they would be offering and kind of the right of first refusal to take those uh, rates. Um, and that's spelled out in a separate agreement, I think, just to keep things I don't know if two agreements are really simpler than one, but I was asking Brian about it before. It just meant that the host agreement didn't have to be modified and make a kind of a side agreement that you sign at the same time. And it is, uh, yeah, that's one that was so, in our packet. Well, he has the, I sent my edits off to them too. And right. They, they made changes to the, to the right of first refusal. So does this have legal review? Or does this need legal review? I don't think it needs a legal I mean, I'm, com I'm very comfortable with it. It's a pretty standard language. Okay. Um, what it so the right of first refusal, what it gives us, it gives us the right to purchase power at 11 and a half cents, fixed for 20 years with 0% annual escalator, or any price that's subsequently offered to a, another municipality if it's lower. Um, the Energy Committee's discussion was along the lines of, of uh, quid pro quo for being host customer was the opportunity to um, the opportunity to buy power at that rate as we explore uh, additional options. At whatever percentage of our total power demand we, we deem appropriate. Right. And, and my understanding is that uh, counts under the, um, or whatever you have offered to other people. I mean, so we can choose the 11 and a half cents per kilowatt hour, or we can choose the 80% off your electric bill gift certificate option that was described at the May meeting. Um, so, yeah, like, so, right. <coughs> well, as part of the, um, let's see, I'm looking at the re most recent email from Brian, which had some things that he, uh, um, some things that he had added um, yeah, to just clarify some things. Yeah. Um, it says, doesn't it? Does that mean you're in? Credit purchase price for the town of Whitley shall be eleven and a half cents fixed for twenty years with zero percent annual escalator or the lowest price offered to any municipality that purchases net metering credits from the solar array. Um, included in that is the possibility of just getting eighty percent off. Uh, the eleven and a half cents is probably better, it accounts for I'd have to look it up, uh, better than eighty cents on the dollar at current electric prices. Um, or in looking at the last couple of years. You'd have to go back three or four years before 11 and a half cents is better than 80% off, or sorry, 80% off is better than 11 and a half cents per kilowatt hour. This is a, it's a commercial rate for the town of North 11 and a half. You take commercial rate. For, for a town 
usage. The town is the is the buyer of that at, at eleven and a half cents, or is this applied to? Uh, our average annual electricity cost was 11 and a half, uh, not 11 and a half, 17, 17, 18. 17, 18. Oh, so okay. 17 and a half. Yeah. The 80% is definitely a better deal than the other Okay, the, the terms of this are, are 20, 20 years. Uh, it says in case of termination of agreement, what would cause termination of the agreement? Which one are you, which one are you reading now? The whole <laughs> Number two, the second paragraph. In case of termination of this agreement, um, I guess we could um, decide to be able to post customer anymore. Um, obviously, there's might be ramifications to that, but <coughs> well, if they went bankrupt. Yeah. Yeah, that that would be an example. If they all went to jail for embezzlement, not that they will. That won't happen. But those kinds of things happen. So, what else was discussed by the energy committee or considered in relation to this was the next next amp. Have one or is it different? Yeah. So, so, so there were discussions that took place. So, in, in terms of. The, you know, the possibility of, of next amp being an off taker, off taker for the next amp um, arrays, and so that's why the idea of uh, the right of first refusal came up, is that we're not we're not agreeing to purchase power from ECA Solar, but they are agreeing to hold open this offer while we explore what we could get with the, through next deal. amp or somebody else. Can we not just be a host? We can. Could be. We can, and this agreement allows us to be just a host. Um, we would have to actually say, okay, we give up our right of first refusal, but we have that right of first refusal. And the main advantage of having that right of first refusal is if Nexamp comes to us and says, oh, we'd like to give you uh, 13 and a half cents per kilowatt hour and uh, 85 cents on the dollar right, as options, we can say, we have a little better deal. You'll have to do a little better than that. Um, so we have something in our pocket for negotiation at the very least, um, and it's it's you know, compared to what's out there, it's a pretty good offer. Right. Um, the, the, someone brought up the town of Warwick having a, an agreement that gave them half a cent per kilowatt hour of, of production in that case, uh, and that was for a huge array as well. Um, the they're only getting ninety two and a half cents on the dollar for their rate. Um, and it's in a different electricity district, which seems to have different rules that I don't completely understand. Um, but that's... I mean, we're not, we've already agreed to be the host for Nexamp, is that correct? You don't have to be agree to be the host for Nexamp. This we is a different kind of program okay. that applies to municipalities. Okay, why, why did they come to Whaley? I mean, we're, what, 35 miles away from Chicopee? with dozens of other communities. Let, let's assume they probably have gone to dozens of other communities, and why wouldn't, why, there's no downside to being a host <coughs> community. There's none. Why would the other 25 in between? You have to ask them their <laughs> support. You have to ask them. I personally think it's because they know people in, the, they know people in this town, they know, um, uh, they know that we're reasonable people. We've got uh, a physics teacher on the select board now. We've got another physics teacher on our energy committee. We've got someone who works in the electric power industry on our energy committee. So we've got, we're so lucky in this town with a lot of our committees. <laughs> you know, we have people who are, are experts and working in the field on these committees willing to serve for free to do these things. So I, I think when much of what you have to do is explain stuff related to electric power, industry and the actual you know, physics and understanding of generation i think that's one of the reasons why our energy committee is able to you know come to agreement really quickly um, to me that's that's the only thing that i can think of that makes waitley uh, more approachable than some other town i mean could springfield do it yeah in six months yeah um, i think i think that question I think that question was asked before too and I think part of what, what Luke Bonanda had said was that a lot of municipalities have already entered into power purchase agreements or similar arrangements where they're already doing this, and, and, and Wheatley has been doing this. And, 
Oh, that's true. Some municipalities, you know, they have their own um, municipal lighting plants, you know, the light power, so you know, oil plant power, Chicopee um, has their own light power. Um, so there's some municipalities that just can't do it. Um, and I think, I think the response was that there was a lot, a lot of municipalities had already entered into these types of agreements. Because this would be effective the day we sign it here in July, and then if we agree with the 11 and a half cents, we can. Which one's that? Purchase, well, the host agreement. We could, we could purchase that within the next month or two. Is that the plan? So the whole. Or are we looking. The project was uh, operational. Yeah. <coughs> and that's yeah, later the, on this fall. Right? Have to be up. That, that'll be yeah. this year. Right. This calendar year yet? You're looking? Well, it, it should be finished. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But then Eversource has the right to delay um, the system being turned on, and that's nothing that we can control. Um, but we're compliant with everything that they've asked of us. Do you have the you have this revised, the revised agreement? Yeah, the revised and signed. Yeah, the most customer baby too, or just this? Yeah, everyone. Okay. And you, you've got all approvals from the city of Chickabee, I guess, on this? Excuse me? You, get, you have all approvals from Chickabee on this? Or? All we need is a building permit. It's as of right based on the zoning um, because it's industrially zoned and it's on the roof. Um, we have structural affidavits stating that this can structurally um, be supported it's on the roof. And that's okay, that's the hurdle needed the to get a building permit. So at this point, it, it's a matter of just going into the town, paying the fee, and, and applying for the permit. Okay. You secured the finance. Right? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. We're already. We're probably we applied for this with EverSource back in December. Um, and cut ever so we saw their checks back in December. So we're pretty far in the process. Okay, I make a motion to accept the recommendation of the Energy Committee. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Yeah. Is that a friend you would sign that as? This 375, that's our usage, you know? Um, yeah, that's, that's, a, total. that's the, a total. The total maximum. That, so now if they know that, then they can sell the other 90% of the output to other people they're reserving. Uh, that, that, that amount, that amount yeah. and, and well, it doesn't lock us into 375, it just says up to 375. We could do right, and it's based two. on I've got an Excel spreadsheet of it that uh, Ryan sent around of what our usage has been in the past. And this is specifically for municipal use as opposed to the next hand. This is for municipal use, this is for yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, so while Fred's okay. signing, can we go to Town Hall renovation project? Okay. I was. We could get the host agreement signed too, though. Yeah, we do. Yeah. What I would recommend is that we combine this with uh, 5B Jones Woods Architect. Contract extension, um, okay. Or, or maybe we could skip to the time bond proposal acceptance so that Keith could go home. Sure. We wanted to do that. Is that the only other thing in the dump truck? Yep. We'll talk about those two things. Okay, we can do that. Okay. Oh, sorry. sorry, Keith, I didn't realize. Thanks. Award of wow, we lost our whole audience from that. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate it. All right, thanks. Okay, dump truck is the first one. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Or to sell a 2,000 dump truck. That's not going to happen. So we had zero bids at $7,500. We didn't try hard enough. For the shiny red dump truck. Nobody wanted to buy it. On Craigslist or something like that? Uh, 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 municipal. Municipal. Just uh, government is set up for. Craigslist for municipal. Pretty much. <coughs> so what do we do now? Certainly, my recommendation would be to consider two options. One is to um, re repost it. However, there's 
based on the initial valuation, <coughs> thought it would be <coughs> created certain steps that Brian had to follow with as far as how it had to get advertised. Um, I think we could certainly say that maybe based on what happened already in the not getting any bids, we could maybe say it's worth less money. It doesn't mean that it will, um, won't net a good profit, and, but at least we wouldn't have to um, spend the money to do the filing and the notice and the papers and the I don't know, is there any other costs associated? I mean, the Central one, register? I mean, the group the only expense is, is the newspaper, but that okay. adds like, because of the length of minutes, it was $150 or something close to that. Uh, but also we have, it's part of the, our bylaw, you can explain that. Yeah, better, right? so again, uh, special town meeting material, yeah. our surplus bylaw that we have on top, town says anything under five thousand dollars can go through the local process. Okay. It doesn't need to go to the central register, doesn't need to go to combines, doesn't need to go to the advertising the newspaper, uh, seal bids, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we can just do it. Um, Municipal Modernization Act expanded that to um, properties under ten thousand dollars or less. We can go through that process now. Except our local bylaw says five thousand. So we need to amend our local bylaw to say ten thousand instead five thousand. So right now it's kind of in a weird spot because say the truck's valued at $7,500. Okay. State law says volume local procedure, low local procedure says anything under five. So we need to amend it. Long story short, we need to amend it. Okay, to and that's a special town meeting thing. So, so what happens in the meantime? Are you gonna advertise for any bids or um, a bid? Or? If we, the only thing we can probably legally do would be to go back and do it just the same way we did, would be spend a, Hundred and fifty dollars and re-advertise the paper. I certainly will say this much about it: it's worth more to me than, than just to giving it away. I mean, yeah. it's it's certainly in this day and age with what other used vehicles, even pickups bring now. There's no need of giving it away. Um, at some point in time, if we continue to use it, something happens to it. Well, we can lost anything we, we can't get anything for it now anyway so so is it in running condition oh, yeah. Yeah, condition? yes um, it's it certainly has its problems which is why we're replacing it rust and things of that nature but um, by no means is the you know the powertrain part of it is okay but did you use it to plow snow this past week yes we did the only thing that we opted not to do in certainly can do is to get it inspected. We chose not to, my last go around when we have all our vehicles done, we <clears throat> were anticipating on selling it and so to put a sticker on for commercial vehicles cost just over $100, so I said, don't bother doing that. We're gonna be getting rid of it, but. Um, so your recommendation in short is, yeah, let's advertise in the paper though instead of on this, uh, Oh. No, I'm saying just sort of the opposite. I'd like to try to get out of having to do that. But you're, so you're, you think it's okay to wait until we have special time meeting? Might be that. Maybe that's the best way out. That's oh. the only way, am I correct? That's the only way we're going to get out from having to spend the legal. Maybe winter coming close. Unless you value it at less than $5,000. Well, reduce the price. You could, that's something, an uh, option we can do. But then, as I said to you, what happens if it sells for 6000 at that point in time? And Where we, do we? And we say, we, we're in a problem. We the other process. See, okay. it's, it's hey, terribly yeah, this is the problem with these laws. So, it's just, do you want a six week delay be a problem for you? No. No, because that's, I'm guessing that's what problem. No, it's no problem to me. I'm just letting you problem. know where we're at with it. And uh, I guess I would see this. Get it inspected and, and use it some and I try to use it for the winter. Maybe I mean, it, it certainly, it. It certainly yeah. has some the uses that I would try to, you know, make it, use it so that I don't have to use my new vehicle right. and subject my new vehicle to some of the things that this yeah. other vehicle could do. Right, yeah. if you can use it for the winter with, without transmission going or tires or anything major, I'd say use it for another year and 
next year if you have to get even less, well, at least you I, get more. Don't think we're going to be adversely affected financially by, by doing that. So I, I, I don't see a need even to advertise again. I can say get it inspected and if you need it for work now or in the I winter, just, go ahead. But, you know, at all, but in the at meantime, the same, let's change the bylaw yes, so that when uh, the time right. comes that we yeah. have that flexibility. And I'm also conscientious about the fact that when I, you know, we present these projects to the town and the community and we say we need to replace this because it's the vehicle's old. I don't want to turn around and say, oh, I'm going to keep it forever now either because- The optics are- Yeah, I don't want that. But at the same point in time, it's not like we tried to sell it. We, right. um, yeah, you went through the effort and you tried to sell it response so I, I you know whether or not if we shows. started it again we wait until we can change the well maybe more trying to be able to an individual and not to municipality well that's primarily no to municipalities every anybody and everybody oh okay. and the fire yeah. truck was sold okay. the same way <clears throat> that was sold to a, a retired firefighter out in burlington Mass, just outside of Boston. So, um, all right. So, what if we would allow a change and give it one more shot? Yeah, that's, I yeah. think that's fair because it won't incur any costs. And if yeah. it yeah. sells, it sells. If it doesn't, then I'll ride through the winter. Okay. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Where's my road bridge? We, Brian and I, met with Ty and Bond. Um, went over the. Um, proposal on their for their contract for their design do you have the the breakdown on the numbers basically with the amount of money that we were given by the the state well, it's at the end, at the end of the packet. Okay. do you have the percentage on the um, the probable construction cost no but the remember the percentage on Contingency. <coughs> what do we have? Um, he has listed here six and a half. But you, we factored out. There was a, we figured out how much contingency we have. They Just recommend thirty thousand four hundred dollars. They recommend a little bit more contingency right? than we have for budget. Should we have unexpected overruns, then we may have to go to like Chapter ninety funding. If things go go good the funding will that we have from the state will totally cover the project and that that was a question that I think Fred had asked a couple of months ago at one point was whether or not the funding still and, and it should be provided that the contingencies are not one of the things that we got going for us in this case is that there really shouldn't be any, very much that we run into that was unforeseen. Whereas, because we're taking it, the bridge out and starting fresh. If we were in a position where we were trying to rebuild something and keep something, and you start working on it, and then you realize something is more deteriorated than you originally anticipated, then you then that's where you usually run into contingency problems. In our case. I'm hoping that that's not going to be the case because we're starting over everything brand new. You're, you're comfortable with these costs, on the construction costs? Um, I, I have to take their, you know, the bidding stuff, I have to, that's what they do on a regular basis. I have to take their, their estimates. Thousand dollars per cubic yard. Seems, uh, kind of high. Of course, that includes more than just the material. I guess that's yeah. Right. You know, your your line, line items, items is, uh, is yeah. did we use these estimates as the rationale for our application, or are they looking at how much money they have that we have and said, hmm. I think it's going to cost four hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars. Well, they backed in with a contingency to come up with four ninety-seven. Well, right. So, I, I, yeah. um, I mean, it's just like these were around this. These were around the same numbers. That yeah. There were there were some modifications. Um, okay. But 
they, they were around the same. Again, I think a typical contingency is through 15%. Um, six and a half percent is what is what gets us to our total amount. Keith had mentioned if we need the other eight and a half percent, it's eligible. It's an eligible chapter nine yeah, so um, expense. Okay, so their their total fee for time bond is one hundred four thousand four fifty. And yeah, that that includes a contingency, but that's on top of that. The you can oh yeah, there was that other breakdown. Yeah, there's the other breakdown and contingencies. Were it's not part of their, That's it. It says their engineering list. So, so I had this question for yeah. when, we, when we met with Craig. So they, this engineering budget that they have in their proposal, 104, 450, includes this 70,300, and then there's okay. different pieces contained in item one, two, three, four, five, six that okay. add up to so the that 104, 150. is split differently on the one that looks more like the spreadsheet. Yeah, so it only, it only adds up, it only adds up to 100,700. Which one adds up to? On the construction cost, when you have the 7,300, the engineering fee plus the 30,400. Okay. Yeah, I think he's saying that this, uh, plus other things that are sprinkled throughout here, uh, add well, up to the 104. I don't see that that way. Oh. I was confused and I asked. During our meeting about that, and that's what he had. That's the answer. He that's gave. what he had. Some, yeah. some of them are uh, exactly some design the services. I don't think. Uh, I don't know. Like for example, do you remember any of the other line items that were included in 140 sites? The 70,000 engineering. Um, so, for instance, permitting. There's a permitting line task two here on the in the proposal, and then there's a permitting line item. Um, in task six, or item six, I'm sorry, supplemental design services. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's some elements that are in the opinion of probably construction costs that are okay. included. In the time okay. Right? So that's included. It didn't add up on it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see some of that now. <coughs> yeah. So the cost should not exceed the four ninety seven eight hundred. Provided that we don't exceed the as long as because you're saying contingencies are work real hard not to a little low, but understandably so for the kind of project okay. for what you recently explained. So the total cost without the contingency is four sixty seven four hundred. That's okay. what they estimate. And contingency is an estimate. You pay what they get. They there are no contingency costs. Okay. So we pay the the six point five percent whether or not contingencies come up. No, only if they come up. So the action for the board tonight, if it so chooses, would be to, would be to accept the engineering proposal from time bond so we can get started on that. I would move that we accept the engineering okay. proposal from time bond. But, but that, that only works if there's extras. If you don't use, say, all these cubic yards of concrete, you're not going to get any credit for that, right? Well, there again, this is a, these are estimates <coughs> when it actually goes right. to bid. I mean, that's just like the, the same, similar situations when you have estimates on any of these other. Yeah. The contractor yeah. will bid it yeah. based on the estimates that were given. Jonathan, you made a motion to? Yeah, to accept the time bond proposal. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah. So, yeah, this will be just, just for the signature. It's an authorized representative. It's freezing in here. Sweater today. Okay, moving, moving, moving on. What do we? Yeah. What's that? It's been spread out here. Town Hall. So now it's working. Town Hall project. Oh, sorry. Uh, 
Thanks, Keith. So we're going to have all the renovation project and the John Woods Hey, did we, before we get into that, the, on the energy, the next amp off taker, did we discuss that? So, um, the off taker part. Off -taker um, part so, I've yeah. had, I've had discussions with um, next amp. Um, I had a phone call with, with the representative, and we didn't come to any conclusions. They were going to give us, um, well, how detailed do we want to go into it tonight? Um, they haven't put anything in writing. All right, so. we don't have anything in writing from them. Um, it's looking like, in terms of the Whaley projects, um, there's the, the, the net meter caps in the Wumiko territory have been hit. So the projects may be delayed a little bit, and that may be what he was referencing in terms of the Chicopee plant being able to turn on. Um, so, so in terms of us purchasing power from, from Nexam, from those, from those arrays, it will be further down the further into the calendar year, possibly even to next, I think next spring was, was a possibility. Um, and then there's also, without going into too much detail, there's the SREC 2 program is ending and something called SMART program is going to be starting. And from what I'm told, that's a little bit less, the incentives are less lucrative, so it may be, you may be able to get a better deal from an SREC 2 um, solar array. Um, it's a long way of saying we've had discussions, but nothing solid from them. And so when would this appear in the writing? At the um, that's the point the it's, it's yet yeah. to be determined. Um, what was it, the, the delay, the state delay? There, there's, so the utilities are required to take um, so much energy, um, so much renewable energy, yeah. and there's, yeah. there's caps as to how much they need to accept. <clears throat> So when those caps are hit, they don't have to accept anymore. Right. If they don't have to accept anymore, then the projects can't sell their electricity to. I thought the projects, they, they, they can't they already go had onto that. the system. What's that? I thought they told us they already had the okay on that. They, they, I, they thought they had it. Maybe, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what those conversations were. Um, my understanding with talking with, with the other representative was that they're in the queue for them. Um, but who, who gets to see or what what one of our departments or offices gets to see them in writing and says okay we agree with that or yes we want that and we're going to proceed with that where, where does that happen does it happen at planning board zba so energy for, oh for the next hand for purchasing right for next hand when, um, when it would have i mean our, our original discussion was, well, it would, it'll ultimately be the select board who will decide that. Um, I think our our thinking was, or the board's thinking was that it was a subcommittee of myself, Joyce, and Paul and Taya to yeah. uh, negotiate with Nexium about the pilot and to also talk to them about the <coughs> power purchase. Yeah. But the select board would make the ultimate decision. Yeah. And you compare, you compare what? ECA is offering, compare what NextAmp is offering, and see what makes the best, see what makes the best sense of. Yeah, the beauty with the NextAmp is that it was offered to town. Right, but there's, no right. there's no guarantee. I mean, they, they could say six months from now, sorry, they're not. Unless they put it in writing. Right, yeah. unless they put it in writing. But Next in the meantime, we've given all the, all the approvals yeah. they need to go ahead and build. Yeah. Well, and maybe we, we just find a better offer elsewhere anyway. And that's that's what ECA is. It's a it's a really good alternative. It will really be something where they except it excludes the town residents. Right. So it we had so, so there's a big with way next there, getting it for residents. I think is yeah. to really that's the one to press for there and not necessarily for the municipal. Right. But at what point yeah. in, in the approval process is it? Do we specify that we want off takers for residents? Uh, the plan, ZBA or planning board has already done that, I believe. Yeah, it's all set. It's a condition okay. of their special the permit, as I understand it. I haven't, okay. I haven't seen the permit. That's what I've been told. Okay, so that's where it has yeah. to start at the ZBA. It's already set. It's, it's already done. Well, it's for that right. one, but there's another one coming up here. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah it's well, but let's worry about it. Yeah. So same company, but okay. So the same process would. Well, the same process may take place if the planning board feels approves it. I don't know if we're going to flood everybody. Okay, and as far as the pilots for them too, if, if 
We're meeting with yeah. Xamp about tomorrow. Uh, no, we run a whole bunch of more numbers. With, uh, uh, and, uh, and Brian and I and Paul have kind of done a little email discussion. And our first meeting exam is 2 o'clock tomorrow. 2 o'clock tomorrow. No. So, so no, nothing really has happened, but it's, well, except that, was, Except that a meeting got set up. Right, a meeting <laughs> got set up and we did some research. Happened. Yeah, and a little, yeah, a little bit of So they won't really know how to negotiate until they know whether they have their, and they're in the queue and they have their group. Right. <coughs> the pilot, they, they'll, they'll need to have a pilot in hand to make the project work. No, um, but, but, yeah, but if, it, if it doesn't go until next year, so The it's pilot under, doesn't start until next year. I would think. Okay, but it's under the new S ranks as opposed to the current, which I think are a lot less lucrative to them. Right. Their financing changes. Yeah. So how could they negotiate now? That's my point. Well, I think they, I think they just go out based on assumptions. I mean, regardless, they're going to have to pay right. the pilot. Right. Yeah. And in theory, the pilot so should equal what they're going to pay in taxes. Over right. yeah. 20, 25 years. But our leverage is going to diminish if they don't come in this year. Because they're not going to be making as much money if they come in next year. Well, you know, it depends on what you compare it to. You know, if you compare it to previous pilots that we've negotiated, we can say, look, this is what you've done in the past, and maybe you're not making as much money, so maybe you have to sell your electricity for a little bit more. Or, or you know, something like that. It's not. It, we're not talking millions of dollars here. The pilots oh, are, are in the you know. But they were talking seven or seven, right. seven and a half cents versus the old pilots are like six and a half or something. Uh, yeah. That's yeah, and that's per, for capacity, not for kilowatt hours. Right. Right. Okay. We're on town hall, town hall. renovation project. We've got a schedule, and also we got a uh, yep. contract yep. extension. <coughs> runs with that. The schedule is very nice. Um, so again, the good news: we we received two out of the three grants. We received the Green Communities Grant, and we received the Massachusetts Preservation Project Fund Grant, and those total um, around two hundred twenty-four thousand dollars. Can we reapply for the third next year again? We could, but hopefully the project will be close to completed. You couldn't do retroactive? Oh. We couldn't do retroactive, no. Mm -hmm. no. Uh, so we're coming up on, um, in terms of finalizing the construction documents, we're coming up on the end of that. The Municipal Building Committee has been working on that. Um, and so really the next step is, um, well there's a lot of next steps, but one of the things that we need, we need to retain um, a project manager, someone to do the construction administration. Um, and it makes a lot of sense, I think, to extend Jones Winsett Architects, who has been involved in the process from the beginning, and I, I believe that's the consensus of the building committee, right? Yes. Yes. Um, so they'll be responsible for um, reviewing the shop drawings, submittals for um, working with the contractors, coordinating with Mass Historic Commission as it relates to the grant, because <coughs> along with that grant comes a little bit of oversight from the Mass Historic Commission about uh, materials and what's going to be done to the building. Um, the, again, they'll coordinate with the contractors um, in town. Um, <coughs> Essentially, they'll provide the expertise that that town officials don't have in terms of whether this is <coughs> material or whether it's being done right. Those types of things. Uh, they'll approve any. They'll review any um, invoices that have to be submitted to the town to make sure the work's been done properly. All of those types of things. Um, so, one of the items we have here is is, is the proposal from Jones Whitsitt. Before we get into that, there's just there's a detailed schedule here. Um, it's still draft, but uh, again, the key dates, and that's this number right up here. Looking at finalizing construction documents um, at the latest by July 25th. Is that in the packet? Yeah. I hope so. 
I think so. It's in a PDF. Yes. So I'm yeah. Scrolling um, out. Is it before the Jones one said? There's also something from the first column here that I don't see on the agenda. I think it was, there was in an attachment that Brian sent a couple of days uh, back on Friday. Oh, found it. Found it. Might have been after the. It looks like this. They're a little separated. I apologize. I went to the agenda. Like, those should come together. But um, again, the latest, the latest that these things could be finalized under the schedule would be July 25th. We would, um, we would bring look for approval from the select board for this next meeting on July 26th. That would essentially be the go-ahead to uh -huh. um, advertise the project. I know it's a little bit ambitious, but do uh -huh. documents will be available the next day. And this will have already been advertised, um, but I think everything's pretty much wrapped up. Filed sub bids again, anything over a million and a half requires filed sub bids for certain, or is it a million? It's a million or a million and a half? It's a million and a half. Filed sub bids for certain trades, so electrical, plumbing. Um, I believe if it's over $10,000, you need filed sub bids. Um, so those we do August 10th, we tabulate those, give, give the filed sub bidder list to the general contractor who gets to select from those tradespeople in their bids. Uh, and general contractor bids will be due August 23rd. If all goes um, as planned, then the select board could award the contract um, at its next meeting. Hopefully everything goes as planned. And then we'd be looking at construction sometime and, you know, as soon as the contractor can mobilize. So we'd be looking after Labor Day, hopefully end of September, they'd be able to do all their outside work you know, before the if there are multiple bids on August 23rd, is it the Housing Committee that will look at the next, or? Um, oh, the building, the, the Municipal Building Committee? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I was thinking that, that, that the board would do it, but okay. um, I, don't, I don't know if the, if the Municipal Building Committee has talked about it at all. No, we haven't, but I, I guess we, we I mean, can. It seems like they would be the best informed. Yeah. Or some of the committee could uh, Yeah, or some sub portion yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. Depending yeah. how many we yeah. get. Uh, yeah. And John Woodson Architect, you know, John Woodson will be part of that whole process. <coughs> right. Um, okay. So they'll review the they'll review the bids as well. Okay. And and would that um, if you have multiple bidders, uh, does that selection eventually come before this board or does that and it's easier if there's one bidder. It is easier. And it's usually better if there's more. Right. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know the exact language of the rule of award, but the procurement laws say, you know, okay. lowest responsible and responsive bidder. Right. So it allows us to check references and things yeah. like that. Um, okay. All right. And, and looking at your, your detailed schedule, you, you have to coordinate when the start commission and get approval by July 25th for the plans. Is that... Is that going to be possible? Well, the Mass Historic Commission? Yes. Um, Jones Woodson Architects said they thought it would be possible. Um, if that's not, because that's relying on a state agency to take action, right. that may or may not happen, that will push, that will push everything back. back. Um, they, their, their internal deadline is, is the end of August to approve these things. I'm hoping that we can push them hard up front and they can get it done. But there's obviously no guarantees and for, thanks for bringing it up because that's an important variable in this process as to how right. as to how quick Mass Store Commission can review these plans or how quick they want to. I So I have a mandatory meeting July 12th um, in Boston for with Mass Store Commission We'll talk about all this stuff. If you remember the Athenio Town meeting, we voted to authorize a historic preservation restriction on the town on, on the on the town hall, subject to the grant being awarded. So, if we accept the grant, one of the one of the items we'll have to do, and it's listed here, is to execute the execute and record the historic preservation restriction. We'll have to fine tune the language of that, but we can work with the town council for that. That's a that's a requirement before they'll release any money. To uh, we're, we're assuming they're not going to ask for any changes in the plans if, if that's even going to delay it further. And, and then I, I guess we're going to decide: is, is it worth yeah, is it worth it for the sixty thousand dollars to delay the project even further? 
Well, let's cross that bridge. Uh, yeah, I know. Okay. So I mean, this uh, is this is an ideal world where everything goes smoothly. Maybe everyone right. crum crumple it up and throw it away, but you got to no, shoot for something. That's good. Right. That's good. It, it, it keeps us on the yeah, ball. You, right. It, yeah. yeah, you push it back. You, you rather put it. Right. Don't build in the push. Yeah, I think you, you did a very good job, Brian. I commend you for this uh, activity list here. Yeah. Kind of go crazy without something like this. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. I, I thought you got it somewhere else, but now you developed it. You said so. Uh, it's more than I could have put put together. So you good can just a few yeah. steps. Yeah. And I think it's important to try to stay on the schedule as much as we can. And that's where Brian's, I think. He's a key player in all of this, and we need him uh, involved to make sure we we uh, meet the dates here. So it's, it'll be a busy couple months to get yes. this thing off the ground, but and when it gets off the ground, it'll. <clears throat> so this, the second part here is the what, we need action on the contract yeah. extension. Yeah, so the new So so what the. What we're looking at today is on page two of the proposal from the <coughs> dated June 27th, this is for 800. <coughs> so that's those three columns, additional services that's bidding, you know, assistance with the bidding and then construction administration. I think they had originally ballparked around 50,000 when they originally talked to us. I'll put it. And this comes from comes out of money that's already set aside for the project. Right. What do you think of that number? Yeah, I think they feel reasonable. You know, we didn't ex right. we built some redesign that they had on the first page here. We didn't expect that, but we changed the design and they, they need to spend some time right. to do that. Yeah, I think it's reasonable. And as Brian was saying, it was close to the fifty thousand, so originally, so it's not a big surprise. Why don't we accept that? Okay. Is it accept the right way to say it? Well, yeah, vote to extend the contract, I guess. Extend the contract. Um, to include these. As it's, uh, as it's written here. Okay, I'm going to second that motion. Yep. All those in favor? Aye. Yep. Aye. Okay. Okay. Uh, project priority list. Um, can I make a suggestion yeah. that perhaps we put that off until the next meeting since that's how we have more stuff to do and we are okay. two hours into this meeting? Okay, sure. That's fine. Okay. And I think that the conversation merits a longer time than we have. Right. Okay. 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 Uh, so the next one. What's the next one? Franklin County Extension County. Inspection Service. So we can probably do these, I can talk about these together. Um, this is, right, Franklin County Inspection Services. This would be for the regional building inspector, wire inspector, plumbing and gas inspector. $7,500, what we expected, what we were quoted for our budget. Um, this is for fiscal year 18. This is the, we'll all mention this is a three-year agreement, um, but it's subject to time meeting appropriation this year. Just require Fred's signature, two originals, that's what they were asking for. And I also have the next thing uh, Green Communities. This is, this is the grant agreement for the Green Communities project um, for the 164 310 for the Town Hall project. And again, this would require the chairman's signature at the pink tabs.
while he's signing that, I could do one or two. Oh, man. Quick town administrator update. So Haydenville Road, Mountain Street, Mascot has hired a engineer to do their preliminary design work on the project. And Keith and I have a meeting August 7th to kind of kick off that process, joint meeting with Williamsburg to get off the process. For not that. Northampton. They're not involved in that process. Um, I, no, I don't think they were. That's curious. Well, they, can they be, should they be invited to make them feel like they're part of the team? Because if we want them to help with the funding down the road of actual construction. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'm going to suggest that to Paul Dunphy. We look at the list What's and say thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah. I'm shocked. That D Dan, you're really going to take the reins of Keeper of the Pound again? I, it's a lot of work. That's why he's here. So I have the broad shoulders. It's okay. Good. We're going to write a grant for that, right? No, just kidding. <clears throat> when was the Keeper of the Pound um, that was written in the 16th century or 17th century? Either I don't know. Oh. But not far off. Well they yeah. that bull and cow that got loose probably should have went to the pound, right? No. 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 The main objective there is keep people from stealing the rocks. <laughs> that's a semi full time job. Alright. Okay. They think it's an abandoned cellar hole. The um, vacancy, or at least the lack of a name on the Capital Improvement Planning Committee and Personnel Committee, does that mean that so uh, those are select, I think those are select board. Yeah, yeah they are select board. Paul was both of those. Pointed anybody? Actually, Fred was the yeah, guy. I, 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 I didn't know. Oh. Um, again. Yeah. So does Fred want to stay on the CP, sure. CIPC? Well, it's kind of related to our other members, I'm so sure. So Joyce, do you want personnel? Sure. Okay. Are you available? Uh, 25th. 25th. <laughs> of July? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Six o'clock. Do we have a quorum now? I think we have a quorum. On that page, we have nobody at Tritown Beach. We have no representatives on Tritown Beach. No, they have an opening. They have one opening. Oh, just one opening. And they have two right. members currently? Right. Okay. Well, have we ever found those? No. Well, then you know what? I'm, I'm going to advocate for reasons that I can explain to individuals offline that we not fill that vacancy at this point for the time being. Right. We don't have anybody. Well, see, that's perfect then. Okay. It's going to be a beautiful privatized club. Okay. And the regional transit agency in the next page, we talked with... Uh, so you asked me to talk to Richard Tilburg about that, yeah. and he's agreed to take on that. Well, yeah, right. <coughs> Should we be adding, um, oh well, I guess we're not, but we'll add housing committee an additional member when these guys fight it out. Yeah. I think this looks fabulous. Housing, housing trust, then? Local housing trust rather than housing committee? Can I still be the town administrator? <laughs> uh, what about the housing? The whole housing trust appointed by the select board as well? Yeah, so the housing trust should probably go on here. Yeah, but right now it's just the housing committee. Right. <coughs> so for the purposes of, of people wondering what they could eagerly volunteer for, um, we've got a vacancy on the cultural council, which is an easy one because you get to give money away and you don't meet that often. So the town should be eager, somebody from the town should eagerly be looking to do that because you make yeah. friends and no enemies. Yeah, and, and especially if you're new to town and you're watching this on TV. It, it's it, it's really an easy one. It's a, it's a very, uh, I know somebody who came in new to town and I recommended them for this committee and now they know everybody. 
they're really happy with that. So. And we have a vacancy on the cable TV advisory committee. Um, and any others? There's also a vacancy on the housing committee, too. And a vacancy on the housing committee. Oh, and we have a vacancy of the, I apologize, the assistant animal control officer. So. Okay. Well, um, would anyone object to just moving the slate, so to speak? I would move that. I would second okay. that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, town administrator updates. Can I ask a quick question? Why isn't something like the rec committee on this list? Because um, the appointment uh, dates for like next year or the year after. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's only those people who are. Okay, I was curious. Okay. Same with like finances on uh, because we don't appoint, right? We don't, we don't appoint, appoint that. Them, right. Right. Okay. Is that the Okay, town administrator updates. I have two quick ones. You already had one, so you get one more. I'm going to combine them. Um, Comcast drop has been put into the building, finally. So if Cat's getting price quotes, I'll uh, figure out how best to connect um, the fiber in there to the camera in here, whether that's wireless or hardwired. Um, so Comcast has done its part. And, and as part of that, have we moved forward on securing the uh, skills of an IT firm? Um, no, we are, so you should be, so we're waiting for the money to hit our bank accounts from, okay. the, uh, from the mass IT firm. Because ideally all that should, should happen together so that there's some coordination, coordination of you know anything team related. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it could be, yeah. Does that count as two? It's three, so right, we're done. A quick one. Water, uh, manganese filtration project. Uh, the pilot study that seemed to go on forever, that the results were positive. And I think that technology that's, that the water commissioners have chosen will work. Um, that is much less expensive than the other, um, the other system that they're looking at. So the results were good. It, it pretty much took out that's below the all, if not, Trace. Um, the trace amounts of manganese left. So they're going to pump some back in to give it taste, they said. Manganese? No, I'm kidding. But they, they said it, it, took out, it took out like all of it. Oh, okay. Um, so it's okay, good. It really well. Good. Um, and so for that project, we're looking at um, hopefully going out to bid in August. Um, that's kind of a go out to bid. It's going to be kind of a sole source procurement type thing possibly because mm -hmm. it's kind of the only system, there's only one manufacturer that builds that system. Uh, but we'll do a little bit more research into that. With you know, installation starting hopefully sometime in September or October, uh, it shouldn't take that long. Related to that, how's the, the connection the, coming along? For the, the water? Yeah. The other connection? Yeah. Um, we're still waiting for preliminary cost estimates for Berkshire Design Group. Then once we have the preliminary cost estimates, we'll have to have the discussion about how we fund it. Well, we had a committee set up, didn't we? So we had, committee, we had task a, force, whatever we call it. Talk about, it. yeah. You know, um, I mean, but I'd like to know preliminary cost estimates before we start mm -hmm. bantering okay. about who pays for what and how much. And, but you know, as part of this, I forget where I saw it, but it's it's a really good idea because it's going to be a, a sales job at some level in town. And it struck me that, I forget what town it was, but they did a, a very high-end video of a water merger to be broadcast across town in terms of its benefits, the reasons why, all that type of thing. And, and I really think that, that we should have FCAT work with us and put together a, a, real, <clears throat> a real good um, well-produced 
video on the importance of this merger for not just those residents that are, that are part of the right. the center of town gig, but for the importance to the entire town and our history with this because it's not it, 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 it won't be an easy lift necessarily to get this thing done. So I, I would like to just put a bug in people's ear that, that maybe we start to have a conversation about how we can use FCAT to really sell this thing. It's gonna be a big big project. But I and yeah, that's a good idea, but I, I think the tie and bond has done this most recently with another <coughs> two community or one community near Springfield. I don't know whether it's Agawam or somewhere in West Springfield where they combine two systems like this. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're using this as kind of as a spin off from some well, of that. and that's fine. So yeah, but I mean we could ask <coughs> ask them what they used to to uh, educate the public on that on that project. If they did. If they did, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah I don't know. Okay. Okay. But. okay. Is that it? Are we at number eight? Sure. Okay. Meeting dates. Next meeting we had the twenty sixth. Yes, yeah, so oh, July. Okay. Yeah, the 26th. 26th of July, which is a Wednesday, you said? Correct. Yeah. And then what are we going for? We're going, that was the second, was the second and, and last Wednesdays of the month. How does that work out with your plan? Is that going forward? Going forward, yes. Yeah, that's always um, that second and last. Don't well, I get that, but yeah. Wednesdays. Right, Wednesdays, what you're agreeing At least through, I mean, Joyce teaches. Uh, yeah, that doesn't start till September. So if August or even the the next one, we're able to. We're, I, I'm flexible on those. I guess my question is is, is post first semester. Uh, I teach the same course in the spring. In the same schedule. Uh, yeah, but there's a, but we don't generally meet in December. So after Thanksgiving, there could be a while, and then into January, we don't start until the end of the month. So there's. And then you're done pretty much by the end of April. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that works. So, I, just, I just, once May hits, Wednesday's getting dicey. Right. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, so I would say sometime towards the end of April, I can start go, coming on Mondays at uh, 6 o'clock. I can come on Mondays at 7, that's not a problem. But I think everyone agrees that 6 <coughs> is a better meeting time for us. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to do the second and, and last. Yeah. For the foreseeable future. Right. So that for that first Tuesdays. meeting in August, that would be on the ninth or right. the second Tuesday. Can you try I to send? Do you think you guys don't really use Outlook? Do you? That's a Wednesday yeah. the ninth. Can you try to send me a, a meeting invite? Yeah. For those dates. Okay, I haven't done that there but yeah, I can. Brian, I mean, it's you? it's pretty easy. You schedule on your on your Outlook, okay. and then you send an invite. There's an invite list, and you just send okay. the three of us an email, okay. and it should populate into our. Yeah. Okay. And That's Brian, just yeah. really helpful. Okay, Brian, when were you but, thinking yeah. of a special town meeting in August the last week? I was thinking, well, if we're being on the 30th, maybe the, the, 30th. Maybe the 30th would be a good date for a special town meeting. Okay. Ooh, and we can add it to our... I, I know, I, I, but you know... We'll have a, we'll have a short select be, you, you, yeah. No, 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 my point is, is that Special town meeting can be 15 minutes. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, I get that. But if you would like more than five people to be at a special town meeting the week before Labor Day is oftentimes not the way to populate that meeting. Oh. That's just my thought. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Well, you're looking at the 13th. I celebrate Labor Day by working, so. You can go to the second. Wednesday. No, you can try it. Thirteenth, then. <coughs> September. Yeah, thirteenth of September is the second uh, Wednesday. Is that too late? Well, I mean, what's driving this is is the 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 part, the town hall easement yeah. that we would need to consider. Um, second week too late for that. Well, if you wanted to start in September, could yeah. You could you do it the the, the week first week. meeting in August? I think that'll. Yeah, the, cho yeah, the no, choices are the 9th or the 30th. The historic commission is going to be dragging their feet. You're not going to... I mean, if it's not yeah, a controversial... I think we could do it. We don't have to uh, have it with the feet. With the if, if it's not going to be a controversial item, have it that day. Well, we can move it up to 23rd. Even. 
Or with our meeting at no, 10 I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not even sure I'm around then. But, yeah. but again, I, I don't need to be there if people want to move right. forward. Well, 23rd, I will be out of town. Yeah, we I'd have to have, we have to have two of us there. I'd be back for the 24th, though. Right. I'll, I'll be probably out the whole week. But if, you are, but if you're around on the 24th. I mean, do, do. Yeah, I have nothing to do. Yeah. But you can't, my point is you can't have a special time meeting with just one. Right, so but, but if we could okay. do the 24th. Oh, then I you could guys could do it regardless of what we're doing. Okay, so there's nothing on the 30th and you'll we'll do the 24th instead? Well, we, we gotta, we got to think back in terms, yeah. of, in terms of when we signed the warrant. You got oh. two weeks. We're meeting on the 9th. That's, that's the that's that's two weeks. Weeks. 24th would be okay. Yeah. So signing it that night is in time for a meeting that is, well, two weeks. As long as we sign okay. it on the ninth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, they, I won't be here on the ninth, though. I know that. I will be You'll be, you'll both be here yeah. to sign yeah. warrants? Okay. Yeah. And I'll make sure. Okay. So, so we want to try for the 24th? Yeah. And if I'm around, I'm around. If I'm okay. not, okay. And you guys can carry the water. Meeting, we're picking up 6 o'clock again? I mean, preference really. Six. Okay. Six or seven, whatever. We've been doing seven, haven't we, most of the time? The specials? For special well, that would be here, I, I guess, right? We don't need. Yeah, you yeah. might want to have your meeting at six and then the special at seven. Well, An hour meeting? Mind them. Or or yeah, mind mind them. It depends on what's on the schedule. So, what do you have? Yeah, I don't think we'll have. I don't know, but we covered a lot of things that need to get done tonight. Yeah. Okay, well, you guys decide that. Yeah, we can look it over yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'll check with the moderator to see if he's available that night. All right. Okay. 24th, we'll sign the warrant on the 9th, which will give us another yeah. day. So we'll have a poster. But for now, the next meeting is the 26th, correct? Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Yep.